Welcome to Zero Style. I am your host, Zero, the cyberspace hero. This week, we are going to force a patina on a copper flashlight. Yes, this is a thing that I've been doing for a while now because I think it looks cool. Copper is one of those metals that naturally patinas over time. It gets a layer of residue that's dark on the outside and the materials get this very unique look to them and it's one of the reasons that I'm obsessed with copper and brass. I love the patina metals. It has nothing to do with the smell. I like the way that they look. That process takes a long time and to get a really good ancient looking patina takes years and we don't get that time. So we're gonna force a patina because it's really easy. I've done it I think three times now and we're gonna do it a fourth time in this video. So stay tuned, let's do it. So here's what you're gonna need. Obviously the item that we're going to put the patina on. A little thing to use as a riser. I like a little medicine cup. The actual liver of sulfur itself. A container with a lid that you'll be able to close with the riser inside. Gloves and a mask. I can't stress those enough. And then hot water which I'll be putting in this jar here. Smooth as butter. So you're gonna get your little thing here. The riser is going to sit inside of it, and then the lid will go on top to keep all of those fumes inside. Just our little cup here inside. This, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the liver of sulfur mixture in here first, and then we're gonna add the cup, and then we're gonna seal it up. So let's get some hot water. Forgot, you also need some sort of stirrer. I got a Q-tip here. I'm just gonna rip the fuzz off of. So get our hot water in here. Don't need a ton. Shake up the liver of sulfur. I cannot explain to you how disgusting this stuff is. You do not need much. One nice globby drop. Take this. Get it all mixed up so it starts looking like pee. God, this stinks so bad. All right, now once we're ready, put our riser in there. Cover that thing up. Set a timer for 30 minutes. Once you're done with this disgusting stuff, put it back in a bag. Push all the air out and seal it, and then put that inside of another container just so that stank doesn't fill up your basement or room or wherever. It's been about 15 minutes. Popping it open, you can see that there's all this damp moisture all over the exterior. All right, let's put the lid back on. All right, here we go. All right, let's get this thing cleaned off and take another look. All right, so here's our little guy in a paper towel. I'm just gonna gently rub it. Just kind of roll it across the paper towel. Get any of the actual liver of sulfur juice that's on it off. Give it a little roll in this paper towel. Let it dry out some. I like to kind of squeeze it a little bit in the paper towel. Just roll it around in there and squeeze it some. See here, we've got a very nice patina going. See how this looks when it dries, but I think it's looking pretty good. Pull open the little battery compartment and really make sure it's nice and dry in there. Some of this black stuff is gonna come off. This, this forced patina is not forever. See how I kind of just scraped it here right by the button? You can do as little or as much of that as you want. And this will continue to wear off as time goes on and will form its own new patina. I'm actually probably not gonna release this video for a couple weeks so I can show you uh, what happens after you carry this for a while. Look next. But I think that was a pretty successful forced patina. And this flashlight, oh boy, we should test it. Does it still work? I don't even know. Yeah, boy. All right, awesome next we want to stop the reaction from happening. So I've got some white vinegar here and water mixture. It's in a fit bottle but there's not actually real fit in here, just vinegar and water. We're gonna take that and we're gonna rub that here on the outside. I'm gonna try not to do too much because you're gonna see the patina is gonna come off as you do this. But you need to do it a little bit to stop the reaction from happening from the liver of sulfur. So 
Now I'm switching to the dry side and I'm just kind of dabbing in a little bit. And now the patina is going to stop additionally changing. We've got it to the point where we want it to. And I actually kind of want it to chill out from here a little bit. But yeah, still looking good. The vinegar on here, it's nice and dry as well too. Still working. All right, I'm gonna let this thing dry the rest of the way, and then we'll be back. Now, if there is any details that you wanna try and bring back here, like I kinda wanna see that A9CU, take your vinegar covered cloth here and kinda use your nail to scrape at that liver of sulfur patina just a little bit, and go back to your dry side, pat it dry. Now there's a little less patina in that one spot, so you can show off that bit that you want. So one of the things that I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to leave these recessed areas with more of the patina in them and then these flatter raised sections, I'm trying to sort of wipe it off a little bit more so it'll give it that sort of depth of field almost for certain parts being darker than the others. All right, let's let this thing dry. Quit messing with the zero. All right, so I'm actually recording this portion of the video the next day because it started raining and I couldn't really get the video together by the end of the day. I made a few mistakes because I was hurrying in this process. The biggest one was that I didn't wear my PPE. You really need to wear a mask because this stuff stinks. It smells like awful fart gas the whole time. I complain about it stinking with a mask right there in the frame. So wear a mask when you do this process. It really stinks. And on that note, you really need to wear gloves. I wore one and it was good enough because of the way I did it, but the stuff stinks so bad and your hands will smell like farts and everyone around you will be like, ugh. Every time you scratch your face or try and eat something, you're gonna smell that liver of sulfur stank juice the whole time and you don't want that. Some people argue you don't really need the vinegar if you want it to just keep patinaing on and on and on. That gunk gets everywhere. I like to stop the reaction at the end of my process when it looks good and then just let nature and the way copper works take on its own effect afterwards. Here's our before. There's already some patina naturally that has taken place on this guy. So here we go. This is our finished product. I cut the bead that I had on this flashlight off and I replaced it with my absolute favorite JRW Gear Plague collab bead because I figured my favorite flashlight deserved my favorite bead. So let's take a look at this finished patina. This is one day after our experiment. It started raining at the end of the day yesterday. It's been in my pocket. I've used it just a little bit. But yeah, this is our finished product with forcing a patina. Notice, you can see some of these logos still here because of the way that I scraped them. And yep, this is just an amazing little flashlight that is my absolute favorite. We got ourselves a force patina on my absolute favorite flashlight, a big chunk of copper with a bunch of lumens hidden inside of it. Please be careful when you do this process. Make sure that you're using a water rated thing. Generally speaking, condensation can be dangerous for electronics. This thing has a very nice cover on it. It is IPS water rated, so I was pretty confident in this process. If the thing you're forcing a patina on is electronic and it has batteries that you can remove, you absolutely should before doing the process. But this is a rechargeable light, so I didn't have that option when I did this. Just be careful, and I assume no liability for if you mess your stuff up. There is another technique that I didn't really do. You can actually pour the liver of sulfur directly on the copper at the end of the process or the very beginning of the process if you want to. It will absolutely blacken this thing 10 times harder, and that's not the aesthetic that I was going for, so I didn't do that. But just know that you can just pour that liquid right on top of the copper before you seal it up. It doesn't just have to be the fumes, the actual liver of sulfur will do the job 10 times harder. Well, that is the video this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like. It's the free social currency here on YouTube. Uh, click these boxes appearing around my face if you want to watch more of my videos right now. Click my face down here to subscribe if you haven't already, and if no one has told you today, you are a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today, have some fun, and I'll see you in the next one later on.